Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here in Washington, D.C., where we're interviewing Raimondas Karoblis, uh, who is uh, the Lithuanian Defense Minister. Sir, it's uh, great to see you again. And I know that we're, we're catching you uh, on, a, on a busy day uh, before you hit the hill and then uh, head back. Uh, you've been in Washington for a couple of days. You're here right after uh, the NATO summit. Talk to us a little bit about what the mood was uh, at that summit. There are a lot of concerns about uh, transatlantic unity in the wake of President Trump's announcement of tariffs, a concern about a transatlantic trade war, um, some other language. And so a lot of our NATO allies are concerned whether there will be a message of unity from the alliance when alliance media, uh, leaders meet in July in Brussels. Talk to us a little bit about the NATO ministerial and the tone that it sets for the meeting of, of leaders in July. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Indeed. Uh, so it was. There were quite a lot of discussions, and the first question was about the unity of, of NATO, and about the need to close uh, the gaps and to find the compromises between the the, the allies, which 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 are here, and of course uh, all actually people with whom I discussed. Uh, so really, they they would like to avoid that these uh, disputes which are now in some other areas of defense will move actually to defense and security area to the poisoning of course NATO summit and and also so for the directions of strengthening of, of, of NATO this is about that we are family and uh, of course the uh, not uh, everything is is, is uh, nice and good in the families usually, but uh, it's it's about the compromises, living together, working together, and and, and finding the, the the compromises. So we very much expect that uh, during this four weeks, uh, so the, the the atmosphere will improve at least regarding NATO NATO summit, and of course we will have the summit about the strengthening of NATO, and uh, again the next stage of regaining. Uh, so the role of the defense, uh, collective defense uh, ally. This is about that. Um, what do you think the stakes are if there isn't a message of, of unity that's delivered? If the NATO summit ends up looking a little bit like the G7, what do you think the, the risks are of that? Well, I think that we should not have the, let's say, B uh, way be, be possibility and we'll need to, to concentrate on the unity and uh, because uh, NATO is, is absolutely a win-win situation for all. Uh, Europe uh, needs United States, it's its leadership, it's, it's, it's uh, very much clear. But on the other hand, uh, we believe that uh, US also need uh, allies and uh, one of the great aspects of the United States as, as, as a nation, as a great nation, is to, to uh, generate such number of, 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 of allies uh, so, and uh, like-minded countries. And uh, of course, for the, first of all, for the security aspects, for the defense, and if necessary, fight in, in the every, every corner of the world. So I think that uh, all we don't have any choice than the unity, continuation with, with, with NATO, including Article 5, and of course uh, also other issues which are now on the table and, and which should be on the table and after the, the, the summit, which is uh, NATO adaptation, uh, deterrence and defense, but also the fight against terrorism. Um, there um, are so many friends that I've been talking to um, uh, transatlantically, and a big concern for some of them is that this disunity, this discord, whether on economic or on language, gives Putin an opportunity. And, and a number of people observed to me that, you know, it was after a very successful Olympics that Russia, that Putin invaded Ukraine. Do you think that Putin will want to test the alliance, particularly, say, after the World Cup, after the ministerial, and try to take advantage to try to something less than war, but something that will severely test the alliance. Are you afraid that all of this discord and this language and this unrest creates an opportunity for Putin to try to take advantage of, of, a, of this situation? Already now Russia is testing the unity of NATO. And, uh, well, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, actually take into account what happened in Syria, for example. So then, uh, of course, uh, 
Russia is 360 degrees around us. Uh, Russia is in the east, of course. Russia is in, in with the Arctic policy on the north, and Russia is in the south, increasing its 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 presence in one or another way. So, for example, uh, Libya, of course, maybe not in such a scale as it was uh, ten years ago, but then, n n nevertheless, uh, Central African Republic they are arming and and, and training the the the, the battalion uh, at least of the armed forces, and uh, well, the interests are in the. In the in, in quite a lot of countries, so this is about that. Another uh, area, of course, is the, 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 the sanctions, where Putin is, 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 is trying to find the gaps between the, the, the lies, uh, of course, in particular in, 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 in Europe, and uh, this is always, uh, from time to time, it's, 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 it's really a concern. Regarding this, the, the, the conflict, uh, so really it's, it's, it's uh, the, the question and whether Putin uh, could go to the conflict. I would presume that no. And for that it's necessary to have uh, so precondition for short-term uh, perspective and having in mind the present situation. So the, the, the probability of the conflict uh, is, is, is uh, uh, in my view, relatively low. But in the case of, of, of changes of uh, certain conditions in the world, for example, some, some war, some conflict uh, in, in, in other world was the biggest attention in, 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 in another corner. Of course, it's, it's, it's quite possible uh, because it's already tactics which, which uh, Russia has. And we very much remember 1991 when we are fighting for the independence and Gorbachev ordered to offense, uh, start the offense against the people uh, near the TV committee and the tower, then the parliament, but did not uh, start the parliament in, at the same day as the first Gulf War started. So, well, in, in the case of, of something happens, else happens in the, in the world, of course, so some kind of, such kind of tests uh, are possible. Um, let me uh, take you to, what do you think the most important priorities are for um, the NATO summit? From a Lithuanian perspective, what do you want to see come out of this meeting? Each one of the last three uh, summits, uh, Newport, uh, Warsaw have, and Brussels last year were all very, very positive in terms of covering new ground and pushing the alliance forward. You've seen southern nations, for example, engaged very, very heavily, um, solving that north-south issue that existed in, in the alliance. And as you know, Spanish-Portuguese troops are up uh, supporting whether uh, Baltops uh, or, or, or uh, uh, Baltic nations. Talk to us a little bit about what, what you, from a Lithuanian perspective, want to see come out of this summit. Yeah, from, from uh, Lithuania's perspective, so the main issue for, for us is the continuation of deterrence and defense issue and, and adaptation of, 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 of NATO structure. And uh, it means that uh, continuous implementation and enhancing the implementation of uh, wells and Warsaw decisions. And uh, what, uh, yes, there are positive things on, on, on the table. So first of all, the readiness initiative, which was proposed by Secretary Matis, which means four times 30, 30 battle groups, 30 wings of, of, of aircraft, 30 vessels, uh, ships during 30 days ready uh, to, to move and, and uh, to, to start the missions. But uh, it's about the readiness and it's, 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 it's about the speed and it's good initiative. On the other hand, we think that it's um, uh, the first step, it's initial step, and we expect that the readiness of, of uh, NATO would be higher than 30 days. So because Russians are really, really quicker. So it's 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 one of the of the issues, and of course it means that theoretically, so the th the thirty battle groups, etc., could be deployed in the in the areas of, of possible crisis, already existing crisis, which is which is well one of the at least partial, but it's it's the solution. Another issue, which is uh, so this uh, further work on the um, uh, NATO command the structures, well, two headquarters which, which will be established, one here in Norfolk, another in Ulm in Germany, both about the generation, about the capabilities and then the distribution. So it's really, it's, it's really a very important step uh, uh, so towards the uh, 
um, action in the, in the right uh, theater preparations for that. But of course, we would like that the movements would be further. For example, this establishment of land command component in, in, in our region. So maybe in Poland, maybe in some other countries, but the direction is, is such having in mind that from the conventional point of view, we are most exposed to, 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 to the risks and we really need to, to, to have the chain of, 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 of uh, command and control. And other issues which are not yet on the table, but uh, which, uh, of course, uh, the testing should be to work further. And uh, we are not very happy by the speed. This is the uh, reinforcement initiative and uh, strategy and also enablers, which are the, also the way uh, part of the decisions of, 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 of NATO summit. So, but uh, which uh, really more, more work uh, should be do. But really, the, this words, these principles, readiness and, and speed, speed uh, was uh, of the intelligence, speed of uh, making solutions, and speed of, of, of actions, and together with readiness are the, the key for this uh, for the summit. And uh, this is uh, about our region. On the other hand, uh, of course, uh, more emphasis would be on the anti-terrorism on the south. We, of course, supportive so this this initiative, and we also participate in the south, starting, of course, from Afghanistan and increasing our participation with uh, valuable uh, assets like uh, SOF, for example. Uh, we are in Iraq, uh, also we participate in uh, the EU operations in, in, in Sofia and, and, and Atlanta. We are in, in, in Mali, we are in Central African Republic and also, of course, defending the uh, southeastern flank, we are also in Ukraine. Um, do you, um, I know your time is short, so there are uh, three questions that I want to quickly put to you. One is, is the alliance, you and I have talked about um, you know, you mentioned, for example, the fear of conflict. One of the things that everybody worries about Putin is something other than conflict, right? The inflammatory actions, whether it's in Serbia, concerns about Macedonia, Montenegro, uh, in elections all over the region. Is the alliance doing as good of a job to imagine the variety of very disruptive things the Russians will do? And how much progress is the alliance making to be able to counter some of those things? Because if you look at it, Putin is getting away you know, it's, the alliance is almost playing whack-a-mole where he pops up one where you hit him, he pops up in a surprising place doing something else. You know, is the alliance thinking creatively enough about all the challenges that Russia is posing to the alliance? Uh, well, of course, not, nothing and nobody is perfect, of course, and, uh, but the dynamics is really good. And if we look back to, for example, in Europe in uh, to 2013, the elections to the European, to the European Parliament, and of course, uh, everybody was laughing when Putin was uh, buying with very cheap money one of the political parties of, of, of Europe. So it's Le Pen's parties. And it's only for 10 million uh, euros, euros loan only. And now, so with the elections in, in, uh, and referendum in the in, in, in Netherlands, in some other places, it was clear that the influence of Russia is, is, is very serious. And uh, France, first of all, put a lot of efforts uh, so to, to, of course, to stay against Russia's influence, uh, while also the significant efforts were by, 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 by Germany. And also the, the killings of, uh, in, 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 in London also showed uh, that uh, by, by, by Russian side and expelling uh, so well spies which way and uh, and uh, and the cover of the diplomatic cover it's also the reflection that the position of of the west is starting to be really strong and stronger and it is the language how putin is, is understanding so well maybe there are some shortages but understanding is good and dynamic is also good let me ask you two quick questions. One is the exercise, uh, ball tops and uh, saber strike. Um, talk to us about how important those exercises are. Well, it's uh, very important. First of all, it's the uh, biggest exercises we had so far. And also at the same time, we had the biggest national exercises, which which really very important. And uh, so it, it was various domains were covered, the sea by, by, by ball tops and on the ground also. But uh, so it's it's really very important in testing our host nation support, interabilities, both in the sea and, and, and on the ground. 
uh, but also there are there were quite quite a new aspects. So, for example, the testing, the mobility and infrastructure and procedures. And uh, ten last week uh, saw the 1,500 vehicles, U.S. vehicles uh, from uh, Germany moved to, towards uh, Baltics, to Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. And it was the real test of mobility, and in which it seems that it's working. It's necessary to have some improvements, but but nevertheless. Other aspects were also that, that, that weaponry tactics also which were used during the exercises also we had some, some something uh, new aspects or which which uh, used not in our exercises. For example, so the the uh, descent from the sea to the to, to the sea coast or this this paratroopers jump it's it's uh, it's, it's also and uh, in addition to that, during uh, soft exercises, which also took place at almost at the same time, using uh, ESAF technologies, it's it's also it's it's about the, the tests, and uh, really we need these exercises. Of course, we need uh, the persistent presence of U.S. troops in in in, in Lithuania and Baltic countries, but also exercises, in particular such skill, skill and complex exercises, is one of the of the of the of the, of the elements. But of course, we would like more. And uh, EU obviously is the one that's been working that mobility piece of the equation before Vitus gives us the hook, uh, because you've got to go to your meeting. You're always adjusting your modernization plans. Uh, very ambitious modernization program that you've got underway. Talk to us a little bit about how you're adjusting that and looking at new needs that you're going to have to address? Well, uh, first of all, yes, we, we're paying a lot of the attention to the modernization and 30% of our uh, budget, defense budget, is going uh, to, to modernization of armed forces, uh, weaponry, and of course the main uh, aspects, uh, elements are that uh, our forces, uh, particular ground forces, which is the priority, uh, should move quicker to, to, to shoot, uh, so to have this uh, longer range of shoot, and, and also to react quicker. And uh, this is about that. And we continue the projects on the infantry fighting uh, vehicles, uh, howitzers, and we will have, and also we're investing, uh, the, 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 the huge project is to uh, NASAMS, it's uh, middle range uh, anti-aircraft systems. And in addition to that, we applying to, to, to obtain, uh, so, uh, and uh, negotiating the contract and for the Oshkosh uh, light armed uh, vehicle. And, uh, well, Together with, with these investments, of course, we need stockpiling, ammunition, and, and also this is one also the area which, in where we cooperate uh, with with United States also. Are you concerned that you know you mentioned 30 percent, which is a huge amount? Are you concerned as a NATO defense minister that the pressure to spend two percent may have the opposite effect of creating ill will among some countries that might want to spend more but protest because they feel like they're being treated badly by the United States and always the 3% or the 2% becomes the issue. Are you afraid that that might backfire as you meet with some of your colleagues? Uh, I don't think so. So that, uh, well, this, this request from the United States uh, really justified. They one of the uh, first uh, ministers of EU who in the beginning of 2017 said that President Trump is right. Was uh, requesting, of course, contrib more contributions from Europe, but of course, on that uh, dynamics is, is 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 quite good. I think uh, more and more countries, they uh, almost all, practically all countries, they increase defense spending, and more and more reaching this two percent. Uh, and uh, but. Uh, Unfortunately, maybe not all by 2024, but also maybe we could find some kind of, of compromises, having in mind uh, the readiness of these nations. It's, it's if it's higher than others, it's uh, the, 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 the the output and, and other aspects as the temporary solutions. But of course, we need to more move to to two percent, but uh, probably even or some countries even probably more. Lithuania's Defense Minister, Raimondas Karablis. Sir, thanks very much. Thank it's you. always a pleasure talking to you uh, and appreciate it very much. Thank you very much indeed. Have a nice day.